With his sweet, the Tsar departed, and Tsaritsa tender-hearted at the window sat alone, wishing he would hurry home. All day every day she waited, gazing till her dedicated eyes grew weak from our strain, gazing at the empty plain. Not a sign of her beloved, nothing but the snowflakes hurried, heaping drifts upon the lee, as was white as white could be. Nine long months she sat and waited, kept her vigil unabated, when from God on Christmas Eve she a daughter did receive. Next day, early in the morning, love and loyalty rewarding, home again from travel far, came at last the father Tsar. One fond glance at him she darted, gasped for joy with thin lips parted, then fell back upon her bed, and by prayer time was dead. Long the Tsar said, lonely, brooding, but he too was only human. Tears for one said, yeah, he shed, and another woman wed. She, if one be strictly truthful, was a born Tsaritsa, youthful, slim, tall, fair to look upon, clever, witty, and so on. But she was, in equal measure, stubborn, haughty, willful, jealous. In her dowry, rich and vast, was a little looking glass. It had this unique distinction, it could speak with perfect diction. Only with this glass would she, in a pleasant humor, be. Many times a day she'd greeted and coquettishly entreated. Tell me, pretty looking glass, nothing but the truth I ask. Who in all the world is fairest and has beauty of the rarest? And the looking glass replied, You, it cannot be denied. You in all the world are fairest, and your beauty is the rarest. The Tsaritsa laughed with glee, shrugged her shoulders merrily, puffed her cheeks and bat her eyelids, flicked her fingers coyly, slyly, pranced around with hand on hips, arrogance upon her lips. All the time, the Tsar's own daughter, quietly as nature taught her, grew and grew, and came quite soon, like a flower, into bloom. Raven-browed, of fair complexion, breathing kindness and affection, and the choice of fiancé lighted on Prince Yelisei. Suit was made, the Tsar consented, and her dowry was indented. Seven towns with wealthy stores, mansion houses, seven score. On the night before the wedding, for the bridal party dressing, the Tsaritsa time to pass chatted with her looking glass. Who in all the world is fairest and has beauty of the rarest? And what did the glass reply? You are fair, I can't deny, but the princess is the fairest, and her beauty is the rarest. Up the proud Tsaritsa jumped, on the table how she thumped, and released the mirror slapping, Slip a hill in fury tapping, oh, you lost some looking glass, telling lies as bold as brass, 
By what right is she my rival? Such a folly I shall bridle. So she's grown up me to spite. Little wonder she's so white. With her mother bulging gazing at that snow. What's so amazing? Now look here. Explain to me. How can she the fairer be? Scour this realm of ours and seek well. Nowhere shall you find my equal. Is not that the truth? She cried. Still the looking glass replied. But the princess is the fairest, and her beauty is the rarest. The Tsaritsa burst with spite, held the mirror out of sight, under the nearest cupboard, and when breath she had recovered, summoned Smudge, her chambermaid, and to her instructions gave. Take the princess to the forest, bind her hand and foot and forehead to a tree. When wolves arrive, let them eat the girl alive. Woman's wrath would daunt the devil. Protest was no use whatever. Soon the princess left with Smudge for the woods. So far they trudged that the princess guessed the reason. Scared to death by such foul treason, loud she pleaded, Spare my life, innocent of guilt am I, do not kill me, I beseech you, and when I become Tsaritsa, I shall give you rich reward. Smudge, he really loved her word, being love to kill or bind her, let her go, remarking kindly. God be with you, do not moan, and this said, went back alone. Well, demanded the Tsaritsa, where's the pretty little creature? In the forest, on her own, Smudge replied, and there she'll stay, to a tree I firmly lashed her, and when angry beast attacks her, She'll have little time to cry, and the quicker she shall die. Rumor spread and caused a panic. What? Zidza's own doctor vanished. Mournful was Zidza's a day, but the young prince Ulysses offered God a fervent prayer and departed then and there to seek out and homeward guide his sweet-tempered useful bride. Meanwhile his young bride kept walking through the forest until morning. Vague as to her whereabouts, suddenly she spied a house. Out the dog went growling, yapping, then Set down, his tail tap tapping. At the gate there was no guard. All was quiet in the yard. Close to heel the good dog bounded. As the princess slowly mounted stairs to gain the living floor, turned the ring upon the door. Silently the door swung open and before her eyes unfolded a bright chamber all around. Benches strewn with rugs she found, boat of oak beneath the icon, and a stove with tiles to lie on. For the princess it was clear, kindly folk were dwelling here, who would not deny her shelter. So she set to, cleaned the pans, made the whole house speak and span, lit the candle in the corner, fed the fire to be warmer, climbed onto the platform bed, there to lay her sleepy 
had 